Well, I think I became aware of him as soon as I got to Parliament because he was already a man that one listened to and uh, he had obviously authority and so one became aware of him. But I became more aware of him, of course, when he became Prime Minister after um, Dr. Favod was assassinated. Then I had even more to do with him. But as Minister of Justice, I had a great deal to do with Forster because those were the years of detention without trial, the 60s, 70s, and um, he, had, he made no bones about his intention. Uh, he was going to maintain white domination in South Africa. Immediately after the 1960 uh, Pos, um revolt, um, they introduced the idea of detention without trial. And that was first house arrest, then it became 90-day arrest, then 180-day detention without trial, and then eventually the formidable Terrorism Act uh, of 1963, which allowed indefinite detention for purposes of interrogation. I think in, in his own um, aims, he was efficient. There's no doubt about it. Um, he knew what he wanted. He was quite ruthless. He had no particular feelings about uh, people in detention and their families and the fact that people very often didn't know where their uh, de detainees were being held so that they could at least try and bring them some food or something. But I must say this about Forster. He always gave me an interview when I asked for it. I had no difficulty. I used to phone the department and I would have an interview. And if it was during the parliamentary session, I used to go up to um, the union buildings. And amazingly enough, there was no security there at all. Nobody asked me to open my handbag. There was no metallic um, intervention. And you went straight into the office, uh, the adjoining office to the, to the minister. Uh, his secretary was outside and she took you inside. He offered you a cup of coffee. And then he said, what can I do for you? And I always had a lot he could do for me. Affairs always to do with detainees, prison conditions, um, interrogation of, of detainees, that sort of thing. And he always listened. And I must say, in Parliament, we had many really robust debates. I think that's the best way of putting it. And there was a certain amount of respect, mutual respect. Uh, I respected him because he was really very good after for wood, mad ideas which you couldn't really entertain. And he was certainly much better than his, well, we didn't know then, but his uh, successor. But um, I respected him as a, as a good debater. And he actually respected me too, because on one occasion he said he thought I was worth 10 United Party MPs. And I said I thought he underrated me. I didn't know Forster the man at all. We didn't play golf together. We didn't meet in the, in the parliamentary pub for a friendly drink. So there was none of that. It was purely a political uh, association. On one occasion, uh, I remember <laughs> um, one of the reporters said to him, Mr. Prime Minister, won't you please smile? And Forster looked at him and he said, I am smiling. But that's the only story, and I've got a wonderful photograph of him. I think it's in my book with him saying, I, looking out of the window, I am smiling. <laughs>